Okay. It's one in the morning. It's one thirty. One one uh, one thirty in the morning. We just had two energy drinks. We had a lot of distractions. Oh my god! Yeah, I just got a shout out. By, uh, yeah, we, we we a lot a lot is a lot is happening right now. Yeah. A lot a, a lot. We, we were watching The Godfather, and a lot a lot happened over The Godfather. So we're gonna try to stick on The Godfather, but there's a couple of other things we got to cover. Wait, wait! Before we even uh, yeah, do, we got distracted because Ben for my birthday got me a poster from the Entourage show. And it's from Entourage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean yeah. Yeah. But it's like it's the poster of uh Queens Boulevard. I am and he posted it on his story to which the showrunner Doug Allen uh pu- put on his story. So that was pretty dope. At Mr. Doug Allen. Yeah. At Kevin Dillon Official. Hey, shout out at Victory Podcast. Best podcast other than the one you're listening to. <laughs> yeah, <Kevin>. right. <laughs> <laughs> so um so that that's that. <laughs> yeah. So now getting into The Godfather. Yes. It's Elliot. It's your first time watching it. Initial thoughts. Um So I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> when my parents found out I was going to watch it with you, they got angry and they made me watch it with them first. <laughs> Wait, this is your second time watching it? In like a week. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. No fucking way. This is you, no fucking way. So I told them that the deal is if I. But watch, you were like saying like, wait, is that that guy? And like, like throughout the whole fucking movie, like you're like, oh wait, Ben, who is that? And like, are, are you fuck? Were you fucking playing me the whole fucking movie? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? Oh my god! What an asshole! You piece of shit. <laughs> this guy literally put on a class act <laughs> just to trick me into that he's been watching the movie for the first time. He's like, wait, oh Ben, is that the Godfather? <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. Yeah. So they found out and it, they got pissed because they've been telling me to watch this movie yeah. for years. And then they're like, so what? You're just going to watch it? You've been telling us you're saving it for a rainy day. I'm like, oh my god, okay, I'll just watch it with you guys. I'll try to fake my way with Ben. But then I felt bad. Now we got the podcast. You're calling me out with the whole first thing. Oh my god. So I'm god. like, all right, I'll this just fess mother, up. This motherfucker. <laughs> so the deal is that I told him is I'm going to watch the first one with them. And then I'll watch the second one with you. So in, in all actuality, you're probably getting the better end of the deal. See, see, see Elliot, Elliot, I don't know. See, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, of course you're disappointed. You're like my mom. <laughs> I'm disappointed. No, it's all good. I, I literally have a history of watching shows without people. No, I, when I, promise. I, I know. I know. Because you do that with mm, me all the time. Yeah. I'll be like, Ben, what's up? And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, so the, the, about coming over to my house to watch that show. I'm so so, so I have a question. Were the notes fake too? Like, did you have pre-taken notes from the first no. time? No. And honestly, it's probably a good thing that I watched it first because I wouldn't have known any of the characters' names. Yeah. Because I'm very bad with names when it comes to movies. And there's a lot of names I'm gonna, in this I'm, movie. I'm, I'm just giving a... I'm just saying this early on. I'm, we're, I'm probably going to screw up some of the names. Yeah, I might butcher yeah. a few of the names up. As, as we progress, you know, as we progress, start, stop recording at one in the morning. But well, okay, we'll get so better. let's talk about our like first thoughts after seeing the movie. How, how many times have you seen this movie? This is my third time seeing it, but the first two times I I saw it were like four years ago. So this is my first time really like in in recent days. Yeah, in recent days, um, seeing it, uh. Like, I sort of know what happens as well, but, like, you know, like, there's certain scenes you forget. Yeah, of course. Um, And, you know, that just hit harder. I think I think what's interest, my, what's in, initially interesting to me about the movie is that they get, like, a really big actor like Marlon Brando, right? Mm-hmm. And he's, and, like, you know, like, he's the face of that movie. He's the cover. Yeah, he's the sure. co- He's the cover photo and I mean, shit. And, like, you, when you, like, like, like I... Like back then, if I was going to the movie, the the theaters, I would initially think this is a movie about Marlon Brando's character, right? Yeah. But like, 
once the first act and like you know like the real inciting incident happens when they shoot Marlon Brando's character, he isn't really in the movie that much. You know, like he's there, but like he's not. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, it's not really focused. So I thought that's really, I thought that was really interesting. You know how they sort of like, how they sort of sw- it's a sort it's a little bit of a dual protagon- protagonist between him and um and uh, Al Pacino's character, right? But like. Well, it's definitely can, Al Pacino's story. Well, you could even say that they're almost one in the same character. Because I noticed when I was watching this movie that they are the same person. They are, all their characteristics are exactly alike. I think it's it's almost weird because so like... Yeah, their their actions are almost like, but like when you see their characters, Marlon Brando is almost like he's this very calm and collective guy. Like you, like even so, like when he kills somebody or if somebody backstabs or something, I can't see, you know, like a uh, uh, Marlon Brando's character really yelling at them, more like giving a sinister speech while like you know. Well, he's thinking it through. Well, so one of the scenes that I was like writing down is something I was like amazed by, and it was great acting too, is when Don Corleone um, gets told that Sonny dies. Yeah. And the first reaction he has is not crying, oh my God, they killed my boy. It's what's the logical way and the strategy of a way to get out of this situation and to come out on top at the end of it. but And then only after he does that does he make his favor with the guy in the beginning of the movie to see his son and to finally mourn the death of his son. Yeah. So it's very interesting. He seems... He seems... The interesting thing about the, about the, about the movie is that they give, like, you know, like, they show, like, the family values to the mafia and to gangsters and stuff. Um, and it's almost like that, like, that's how, that's how they really make these characters relatable. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, you see like these guys and like, they're a family, you know what I'm saying? So when this outsider, the brother-in-law, right? Mm-hmm. Comes in and he starts hitting the sister and stuff like that. You know, like you, even Sonny, even though he gets, he gets shot, he like goes straight there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? These are, these are violent guys, but these are guys that have family values almost yeah but i think on that and we were talking about this at the time a little bit even though we said we were going to take an oath not to talk to each other but i yeah. think we broke that oath like two minutes in. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even think it was two minutes <laughs> i think it was like 10 seconds i think it was 10 seconds in. we were like we're not gonna we're gonna get to better we're, g- we're gonna get better we're gonna we're going for 20 seconds next week i'm not even gonna lie i don't even know why you even said to make an oath to, to, for silence, we're just me and you cannot I, stop talking. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I I'm, talk a lot in the movie. I, I mean, it depends. Unless I'm in a theater. Yeah. It de- it de- it depends because sometimes sometimes like because some, sometimes a movie, what a movie could do is like it could zap you in so much. I'm trying to think, like, what's a movie that did that for me? Parasites, a movie like yeah, that. yeah. Parasites definitely. But a you movie know like why that. though? Because you're reading. Because you're reading the subtitles. It ca- By the way, sometimes I found that when I watch, like, for instance, when you get me to watch, like, an anime, and you really try to get me to watch You have anime, to focus a lot more. I have to focus more. I, usually when I'm watching a show, yeah, I'll change while I'm watching it, or I'll do other things. I'll cook or something. And I have it on, and I'm listening, but I'm not really watching it. And that's missing out on a lot of the movie yeah. or the show, yeah. for instance. So I think it's better to definitely focus on, but movies like Parasite, they really encapsulate you when you have to read and watch at the same time. And if you take your eyes off, you're missing something. Yeah. So you can't take your eyes off of the screen, which is great, by the way. Yeah, and it yeah. was a great movie. Yeah, yeah. But there's, there's a bunch of subtitled movies I'm excited to talk about. Yeah. I mean, Parasite's on the list, so we're going to get to it soon. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, awesome. I'm excited for Old Boy. Which Bob. I watched with you. Old Boy, I hear that name a lot. Old Boy, Elliot, you're going to love Old Boy. Yeah, I watch a or, lot of or, YouTube videos on top top videos. Mm-hmm. I'm very like that, and I always got to skip it because Ben's like, we're going to watch it. Gonna old watch it. Boy, dude, no, we're going to watch the whole Vengeance trilogy. 
I don't even know. It's it's part of a trilogy. No, 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 no. So basically, what he did was he decided there's, um, there's he decided he wanted to make three movies about like the the theme of vengeance and revenge. Okay, and cool. and as each movie, the first movie being the lightest, and the third movie being the the darkest and most fucked up. All three of them are fucked up and dark, mm-hmm. right? But the first one's the least fucked up. And the third one's like the most fucked up. Old boys in the middle. Um, I personally think the third movie is the best one, Lady Vengeance. I I, I never seen it. But people, but I think pe- I've heard the name. But of- most people love Old Boy the most because Old Boy has some like really impressive scenes, like yeah. memorable scenes that like, like it has some people. It has this one fight scene that's like one take, and people say some people say it's like one of the best fight scenes ever in cinema. Okay. Yeah. All right, just to get back to um, the Godfather, Godfather, though, I want I want your opinion on who your favorite actor Marlon Brando, hundred percent. Marlon Brando. Mar- Marlon Brando. Um, I think Brando was mine also. Yeah, Brando's mine. Fun. And I think Pacino after. Okay, fun fact: they tell you this in film school all the time. I'm sure many of the listeners know, but I'm just gonna say it for anyone who doesn't. In the first scene of The Godfather. You basically there's uh, Marlon Brando is petting a cat, right? And he mm-hmm. and the you hear you hear the cat purring, and it's very it's very dark, like the colors in the room is very dark. He's like blending in with his dark suit almost, and yeah. that cat the way he pets it is very sinister. That became that became a trend in cinema to always give like a sinister villain like a cat or something like yeah, that. Doctor Evil. Yeah, like Doctor Evil. Doctor Evil. So that came from that whole that whole idea, I believe, came from the Godfather. Now the fun fact about that was that the cat wasn't actually planned. The cat was actually just a cat in the house they were filming. <laughs> and it just went onto Brando's lap and he started petting course, it. And then they were on camera actor. and they're like, Holy shit, let's keep filming. Like, you know, like this is great. That's great. Yeah, so that's... Well, we were going to do trivia later, but I guess we're doing. We're going to start <laughs> it now. I mean, just to go back for a quick second before we even go into trivia time, which is where we read off some of the trivia on the movie we just watched. Um, I think my favorite actor was uh, definitely, um, definitely Brando. But I have a specific scene where I was like, he's a great actor. And although I think one of them was when he gets told Sonny dies... I think the scene where he talks to Johnny and he tells him, you can act like a man, and he smacks him. I think that scene really brings out a lot of the character because he's angry to see somebody he cares for acting like, you know, a child or something. And he, and he makes fun. I feel and like that's a feeling him. you could heavily relate to. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah. Because I, I, I've... You've a, done that a lot. Yeah. I'm a very calm person. <laughs> yeah. But when I see something and I see a friend of mine, you know, who I know can do better and I know they're good. And he sees Johnny and he sees that he's a, he's a best singer and he's a good actor. And he's like, wake up. Stop acting like a little boy. I think that that's... Um, that really showed his character as somebody who cares for the family and cares for Johnny enough to do anything for him, obviously. And it shows how he can go from listening and being calm and being the Don to being caring and angry at the same time, but in a nice family way. Like, you know, he hit him and he said it and he mocks him to show him how much of a moron he's being and I think that was just one of the best scenes I've ever seen in film. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get the reason. Okay. I'm very giggly right now because there's a thought in my head going right now. We have, there's, we both went to yeshiva, Jewish school, and there's this one rabbi. We're going to, oh. we're, we're going to call him rabbi. We're going to call him rabbi C. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna Whatever. call him. He was a teacher of ours. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna call him Rabbi C because we don't want to. No, no relationship. We don't want to say any names. Whatever. He was a teacher. Yeah, he was a teacher of ours. Probably one of the nicest human beings. Very nice guy. I've ever met. Like the one of the nicest guys. But this guy had a way of talking 
<laughs> just, well, he was, he that, was Brando. Yeah, he was he was Brando well, in the movie. Yeah, exactly. And, then, and, and like every time I'm in the movie, I'm just like, Elliot, I just keep hearing around. Like, I, I said it right <laughs> when I saw him, and I'm like, wow, he looks like this teacher. No, he's like, he doesn't look, it's not only he looks like him. He, he, like, he, he, he talks. talks like him. Like He has this very funny way of being sarcastic with the students sometimes. I think he does it on purpose. You know, he does it on purpose. And like, he sits like him, too. Yeah, yeah, he sits like him, and he presents himself this like... This teacher definitely saw the godfather one day and he was like i'm gonna be the godfather of my classroom <laughs> kiss my hand if you want uh, i'll you grant come, you one grade on my daughter's wedding day you come to me on the day of your graduation <laughs> uh, another another thing i really wanted to go into so we're both jewish right and something i really wanted to talk about like throughout the movie but like i thought it'd be good for when we got we got on the mic was just like how similar the cultures are a little yeah. bit. Well, we're we're um we're, we're Syrian. Yeah, yeah, we're and Syrian Jew, but, but, but no, but it's also the Jew, like 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 family values and yeah. stuff like that. Like like that's like probably like the heart of Judaism. Well, right in the beginning of the movie, when it's the when it's the sisters' yeah. wedding, we're looking at that scene, and it's like if you just took that scene and placed it in Brooklyn today at one of our temples or shuls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It w- it would fit. Perfectly. Yeah, it would fit perfectly. And it, it's like we were watching and we're like, wow, I feel like I was there a couple nights ago when I was at that wedding. And it's like, wow. During COVID? No, I mean. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I never get invited to weddings. I just crash them. <laughs> For the food. Oh, my God. They have great uh, steak. There bars. are people I know that do that. I'm just saying. I, I'm not going to lie. If I lived in the vicinity of one of those temples, I would definitely just pop. I would have a soup for every single Dude, the, night. Dude, the, the, the meat is like super high quality. It's like no one's going to know you're not. You and blend the right? alcohol's free too. The alcohol's free too. I would I would go over there in a soup. I t- I just walk over. I'd get a. I'd get. Oh, fill the cup up with whiskey or something, and I just go home and sit down and calm watch TV. down. Calm down. Have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What what also I liked about the movie was also the writing. I mean, it was sp- like you could tell where they focused on the writing. And they focused on the writing for two characters, obviously. Brando and Pacino. Yeah. Michael and... I mean, it's about, it's, about, it's, it's, about, it's, it's about Michael's genesis. You know, like he's sort of like this goody two-shoes in the beginning of the movie. He yes. just came out of the army. But and not stuff. even that. And then basically, you know, his father gets shot. His brother's a hothead. His other brother's sort of a weirdo who just like, you know, fucking women. And, you know, he has to sort of, he, in order to save his family, he sort of has to become this different person that, that he can become because he's had, it makes sense for the character because he's had that army background. You know, like, he's had that army training. He's very, he probably, you know, like, in the army, you have to learn how to very fastly adapt to situations when there's an enemy involved and stuff like that. So, like, his, like, that's what I think is so believable about the character is because, like, you could see this good army veteran becoming this mob boss because he has to for his family. Yeah, and you see the moment. Yeah. When you see it, when he picks up that paper... And he sees yeah. that his father got shot, and is almost and is probably dead because yeah. he's thinking he's dead when he sees that. Then it starts all of a sudden. He's like, "Wow, they're my family. They're no, I, I have no one else except for maybe this girl I've been talking to." But other than that, I was saying I really like the writing because whenever, whenever they're in the scene, a lot of it isn't them talking; it's them listening. And something I was watching is when when Michael's sitting in the chair and they're talking about what they're going to do after after um, Brando got shot. Mm-hmm. He's sitting there while, Son, while Sonny's talking to Tom and they're going back and forth on what we're going to do. And, oh, this is right before he comes up with the plan that... Um, to come up to put the gun in the yeah, thing. and I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, this really echoes something my dad taught me, which is we have two ears and one mouth. We should be listening, double the amount we're talking. And he does that. He listens to the whole situation, 
And only after he listens and no one, and they're about to walk out of the door, that's when he opens up his mouth to come up with a plan. And a lot of the time we see people rush to say things when they don't know what's going on. Which is why, by the way, Marlon Brando's character gets angry at Sonny for opening his mouth up about the cartel, about not the cartel, the narcotics. Mm -hmm. He wanted to hear the whole thing first, then say his his answer. You don't put your cards out before they're... He's a very quiet guy also. Yeah, he's a very quiet guy. But he's quiet on purpose. Quiet people read situations. Yeah. The loudest guy in the room is normally the one who's not really strategizing in a sense. He's not playing Death Note. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I I like the writing in that because sometimes not writing is a form of writing. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, it's the subtext. Like, it's the subtext. Yeah. See, you know that. But I, <laughs> I, I, didn't go to, I didn't go to Tish. I don't know stuff like that. But I, I'm just like, I'm the idiot of, uh, of it. Let's go through some of the uh, the trivia on uh, on the Godfather. I saw one before that. Okay, so this is the first one. So Luca Bronzi, I think I said that correctly, or Luca, whatever. He was so nervous. The like the actor was so nervous about working with Marlon Brand- Brando that in the first take of the scene together, he flubbed some of his lines. So the director liked that he was so nervous that in the beginning scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could see him. Yeah, saying So they went back and they filmed that again where he's practicing, where he's practicing <laughs> the, 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 what he's going to say. That was one of my favorite parts of the first scene, actually. You know, just like that, like where, where, um, where Michael's wife is just like, who's that creepy guy? Yeah, that's Who's right. that creepy guy? And wow, he's like, he's well, a scary looking guy. Yeah, yeah. And, but like, 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 you feel so bad for him because he, he, you see how nervous he is, you know? And he's like, damn, dumb. Well, that's great. And it, it really matches because if you really think about it, Brando is the godfather of Hollywood at the time. Of acting, yeah. So it really fits the character that imagine you were to work right now. Right now, you're supposed to work with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I would lose it. I'd shit my pants. Bro. I would I would be shaking because I normally just like get nervous. I would be literally shaking. Uh, my voice would be trembling and I never do that. You know me. I never. My voice never trembles in yeah. front of people. That would happen. Um, and I would just be, I would be exactly like his character and just be practicing. What am I going to say? Nice to meet you, Leo. Nice to meet you, Leo. So it, it really feels good that, that that happened and that they picked the exact right a- actor for that role. For sure. Somebody scary to work with. Yeah. And not to mention, they say that, well, then this next trivia thing is going to be very funny. So it turns out Brando put weights under his bed. When they were bringing him back from the hospital, just to prank the the staff and the the actors, <laughs> because it would make it harder for them to pick him up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's really funny. <laughs> so, um, probably added some effect to the scene, also. Like you know, like them showing them struggling. Oh, this is really cool. So James Khan, which I think is uh, Sunny. Improvises the part where he throws the FBI photographer's camera to the ground. The actor's frightened reaction is genuine. <laughs> Khan also came up with the idea to throw money at the man to make up for breaking his camera. Which, by the way, is perfect because it really shows the hot-headed character of him. Uh, by the way, I think that scene where um, Jordan Belfort th- in The Wolf of Wall Street, I'm, I'm, pr- I'm almost certain that's a reference to The Godfather. Well, it could be. I mean, I listened to... Didn't he say he didn't really do that? Yeah, so I was listening to a podcast with Jordan Belford, and he said that that never happened in real life. Yeah, so... And that if it did, that he would have arrested him. Yeah. I think it was a podcast with his actual... With the, with the FBI it was, guy. Th- then it was 100%, then it was 100% that, 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 that a reference. Well, I think it's also... It, it, it's it fits well with Marty Scorsese. L- Scorsese loves referencing uh, like other cinema, you well, know. Yeah, like, also that, but also and- he's he's about the money. Jordan's about the money in that whole yeah. movie. So it makes sense that he tossed money at the FBI agent, who's yeah. never going to touch it because once she touches that money, 
he might come to do something, yeah. you know, and be bribed. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Oh, so everyone knows this. Brando wanted to make uh, the Don look like a bulldog. So he stuffed his cheeks with cotton wool for the audience. He does look like a bulldog. Holy shit. For the actual filming, he wore a mouthpiece made by a dentist. This, this is on display in the... Oh my god, it's in a museum in Queens. Wow. It's at the Museum of Moving Images. You should go. Of the moving image? I don't know. Yeah, I've been there. Really? Yeah, I screened a, an old documentary I made in high school there. Wow. These are really cool. Oh, so I see the one you said. So the cat held by Brando in the opening scene was a stray that Coppola found while on the lot of Paramount Pictures. Oh, wow. shit. It was a stray. I thought it was a cat in the house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And was not originally called for in the script. So content was the cat. So content was the cat. This is a, definitely a misspelling. Oh, because it was purring, it muffled some of Brando's lines, which I noticed, I think. Yeah. I was wondering why. And as a result, most of his lines had to be looped. I think I noticed that. Oh, my God. <laughs> this guy is such a beast. Brando did not memorize most of his lines and read from cue cards during most of the film. That's awesome. That's great. Some of these are really fun to watch. Yeah. Or to, to read or whatever. To For sure. Out. But, um, I mean, our final thoughts on this movie. I mean. Defi- definitely holds up. It, I mean, I don't know, because I just watched it last week for the first time, and then I watched it again. I wasn't today. bored for, like, a single second. Like, oh, I was not bored. For sure. I mean, I don't know if it's my favorite movie I've ever seen. No, it's but, not my favorite. But that might just be because the genre of, like, mob and mobster, gangster lifestyle might just be overplayed for somebody in my generation, you know, we see movies like The Wolf of Wall Street, like we were just talking about. This is like a mobster kind of movie. Or like, you know, things like Goodfellas, which I've seen before. It's a great movie. I've seen God, I've seen Goodfellas like seven times. A little bit of that mob mentality is very... Mob mentality, that is not the word. A lot of that gangster lifestyle topic is a little outplayed for me a little overplayed for me and so i mean it, it's i don't know if this is no i mean gangster movies definitely got like definitely got cliched like scorsese like perfected per really perfected the genre yeah yeah scorsese perfected the genre and like to the point where like i know everyone loves the irishman i didn't like it yeah to the point where it's like this there's nothing like, like this is a well made movie, and like you can appreciate that in it, but like there's nothing new about it. That well, I'll th- tell you a few reasons I didn't like The Irishman. Just to go on that for a minute, Robert De Niro is on. Oh, he, he's he's just too cliche. His face is too cliche at this point. For him to be playing a mob character, or a serious dad of some sorts, like in Meet the Fockers or whatever. It's like, not Meet the Parents, Meet the Parents. Yeah. So, like, in Meet the Parents, it's like Robert De Niro, his character, he's a very typecasted character. Yeah. Where we want you to play this rough, tough guy. Yeah. And it's 2020 at this point. We all know he's like that. And first of all, they should have just, they should have gotten a different actor to play him in the in the early stages. And for him to go back to yeah. his, his original You know what it thing. is? It's just that, it's just, it's just that like, what, from what I hear, it's just that, like, him, Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, like, they all have that chemistry, sort of, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's and they pro- to and see Joe is, Pesci back on screen. Yeah. It was, I, I actually thought Joe Pesci's performance in that movie was really good. Yeah, especially when he was. I, I, I think all the actors were really good at, like, their their roles. I want to say, like, the performances the, were great. There were a few scenes. Robert De Niro kicking the guy outside of the grocery was some of the worst acting I've seen. Besides for the, besides for the scene where you could clearly see um, Sonny's character fake punching the brother-in-law. Yeah. Okay? 
So, I but mean, that's like that's like the stunt guy's fault. It's not the actor's fault. You know, that's usually stunt coordination. Well, I think it was also the camera angles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of the so 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 like a thing is like the stunt coordinator. So like yeah, he, this is a good thing to know. Stunt coordinator usually helps a lot with the with the shot list. Yeah, because they know the best angles that look the most realistic. But they're also doing you know they're also managing um making sure everyone's safe. Everybody's doing the stunts right. Yeah, but just to just to go on that though, it's um, I feel like people suck up a little bit to Scorsese, and they wanted to say that the Irishman was great, when in reality, it's the same. It's just not real it's, cinema. No, it's. Uh, you know, let's, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> Remember you know, the Marvel? What? Oh my God! Wait, but like, oh yeah, continue your point. What I'm saying is, is that they they didn't really. They didn't really get into anything more than like Goodfellas. It, it's like the same. It's always the, the same, same. It's the same themes. It's the same themes. It's not really like exploring any. Like the thing with the the reason why the Wolf of Wall Street is not like Goodfellas is because first of all, it's not. It's <laughs> you have violence and then you have nonviolence. The Wolf of Wall Street was about a gangster in a nonviolent situation when it has to do with money and fraud and all that different stuff and and it really is it's like this guy's the kingpin yeah yeah, 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 and he really is yeah where like the good fella you know good fellas it's like sure but it's like okay i love good fellas i could watch that movie all the time ever since i was a kid all i wanted to be was a gangster i mean it's great but then it gets overplayed yeah and even though Godfather was a great movie, from my point of view, I didn't see this in when it came out. I'm seeing this today in 2020. Yeah. For me, it's almost a topic that's been done before. And I mean, I feel bad for myself that I didn't get to witness it when it came out. So I actually kind of got that experience because this is one of my first gangster movies watching. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I got into cinema a little later, a little later yeah, like toward, toward, towards high school. Um, and I actually like some parts of me were like sort of regretted that, but another part of me was like, now I get to experience all these like crazy good movies for the first time while I'm older. That's why. I did this yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, why I waited until, until I'm 24 yeah. to, to watch. But, but so, so, so like, you know what I do? I, I, I don't like save movies. I save genres. Right? Wow, that's so not like me. Yeah, so I'll save like, so like here, I'll tell you a genre I haven't got. I I haven't watched really any westerns because I'm okay. say me I'm, too. I'm saving that genre for when I because I know I'm gonna get super into it. Like the most, really? yeah, the most recent genre I got super into was is was fantasy. I watched all the Lord of the Rings movies. You watched samurai movies. Recently. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Samurai movies. Well, samurai movies were like an an uh part of my earlier phase, and then I got. And then, I, then this game, Ghost of Tsushima, came out, and and like it's very inspired by Akira Kurosawa, who's like basically the samurai film genre. Yeah, I've definitely heard the name go. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he is the genre. Like all the greatest samurai movies are made by him. So wait, just to go on that western thing, uh, it, it's funny. I always thought westerns were boring. Yeah. This, so I, I could see. Well, on the list we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So we have that actually coming up. So here, here's an important thing. One of the, a very important thing because I I also thought that. I used to think westerns and fantasy were boring, right? Mm-hmm. Here's an important thing: never judge a whole genre because there'll always be like a, something in that genre for you. Like there'll always be like that one western that you're gonna watch and you're gonna be like. That's great. Like, Django's technically a, a Western. Uh, I mean, uh, listen, yeah. I've watched Westerns before, yeah. obviously. They say Logan is is kind of like a Western, even though I don't really no. agree I think that. Logan gets way too much praise. Me too. Me I, too. I, 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 think, I think having... The, I found it a little boring. Dude, it wasn't only boring. And the continuity with it didn't make sense. It, did, it didn't make sense. And here's the, here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And that's the, why that's is, the whole well, thing well, with why is there another why is there another why is there another bad Wolverine guy? Like none of the villains exactly. none of the no. villains were interesting. None of them had really interesting motives. Like they like how many times is the there thing. gonna be a, a Wolverine or a Wolverine like character, character 
to fight him. It's never really. I will solid. say I like what they did with the girl with the with the with the girl like her speaking different language. I thought that that little girl. What was her name? I don't know. But whoever she was, she was a phenomenal actress. I thought she was amazing in that movie. Like actor, actor, actor. Okay, actor, come on. Okay, you told me this before. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if it's actor, or actress. I will say whatever people are more, whatever people prefer. Whatever you want, actor, actress. <laughs> let's do it. So, so she was, she was, she was really good. Like, and I think I almost think it was. I like a little... seeing. I like seeing. I like seeing child stars. That you know are going to be big when they get older. You know yeah. what I mean? Unless unless they form like a drug addiction or True. something. True. Some like shit. right that, now. That, that's is... a big, that, you know, that's a big risk factor. Because, you know, when you're growing up in fame, that's like those things are always. What's your childhood. Yeah, those things are always, always in play. Like right? the, 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 the grownups are always going to go in the bathroom and snort some coke. Yeah, but I mean, the, the whole thing is, is it's your, you're losing your childhood when you do stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's why a lot. You of lose these... the aspect of it. You lose. You give up. It's almost you're giving up one thing for like another thing. You well, know. If what you I'm ever saying? noticed a lot of these stars when they're young are like Disney Channel stars. All of a sudden, you don't see them for like five, ten years, and then all of a sudden they come back, like the Sprouse twins. My cousin went to school with them because he was in NYU. They went to NYU. So a few times he bumped into them. And it's like, at that time, they weren't doing any movies because they were focused on schooling. They they, they went to school. They enjoyed that part of their lives. Yeah. And then only after did uh, one of them went into, I think it was Dylan went into Riverdale. One of those. I have no clue. He went into one of those shows. I, I honestly couldn't care less with shows like that. Yeah. I find it to be very cookie cutter, you know. Yeah, and it's like it's like writing, writing sort of. Like I feel like the writers know that it's not good writing. It's like, it's like soap opera writing. Yeah, but with that being said, so like okay, before we get into the other stuff, what were your final thoughts on the show, on this movie? My final Rather. thoughts on, like I said, I think it holds up. In my opinion. Brilliant piece. Like, I, I get, well, I, I don't think it's the best, but I get the argument for why people say it's the best. If you look at a lot of the techniques it uses, a lot of, um, and a lot of the scenes and a lot of the acting, it's just, you know, like, like even taking the first scene, for example, which is something people point out. Like, if you look at how dark the room is where they're talking mm-hmm. compared to how, like, bright the wedding is, like, that contrast, like, because oh. it shows, like, the darkness of the mob. But it's also like these are family people, you know what I'm saying? And they're and like they like you know like they go outside the darkness and they're like you know like they're good people when they're with their families, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, this that actually brings me to something I wrote down, and now I'm remembering. Mm, yeah. Towards the end, I noticed something you're gonna like. I realized that the less power that Brando had, the looser his clothes got. Oh, that's pretty cool, yeah. And the more power that what's his name had, that Michael had, the more like nice his clothing got and the more tight and like you know, well put together he was. Yeah. And I found that and by the way, even more so, Brando puts on a really nice suit when he's meeting the family, even though he's losing the the power. Yeah. He maintains it for just that scene. So he puts on a nice suit. Yeah, and he just puts to him, hold it. And he puts himself together a little exactly. bit. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I thought that you'd like something like that. And no, I was like noticing and then all the way when when th- at the end he's very loose clothing, he's very down and then, you know, he yeah. dies. And the ki- the kids like, "Yay, he's playing with me." Well, that was fun because I, I I thought that that was really interesting that he's shooting him with a gun, a water gun kind of, and uh, you know that's yeah 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 poetic justice a little bit, even though he he said well, we're not murderers, we don't murder. I ask you for my friendship. I think I do a good Marlon bro. You do, you do, you do. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, okay. 
So now on the show, I think what we're going to do is something maybe a little different. I think um, I want Ben to have like his own little like thing and I want myself to have my own little thing too. So I think really quickly, Ben's going to give something that of one of his passions and I'm going to give something of my passion. So, yeah, so anime time. Okay. So I think Ben's going to give like his favorite anime of the week. And I'm going to give my, like, at the end of the show, I'm going to just give, like, a song I've been listening to a lot this week. Something, you know, just for okay. for more, you know, content yeah. for you guys. So, I wanted to, so the anime I wanted to say this week is something I recently caught up on. It's called, I might pronounce the title wrong because it's a Japanese title, but it's called Haikyuu. It's a volleyball anime. Yes, we're talking about the volleyball anime. All Ben does is I can see Elliot staring me down. I'm sorry. Already. This is all he ever talks about. Okay, okay, okay. But 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 listen, hear me out. This show is so good. Like like here's the thing. Like growing up, I was always the kid that sucked at sports. Always the last one picked. I went to the bathroom. I cried. I did the whole I did the whole I did the whole like sucky at sports thing, right? But I never got good. And and I never got sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never... Like, I got it a little bit because, like, when I was part of it. But, like, until I watched the show, and it's it, it, this probably sounds so stupid. Like, I almost had to see the show to get sports and, like, get all the aspects that go into it. Because it's not just a game about who has the most skill. But it's about how well you could work together as a team. Like, one line they always say is that there's six people on a volleyball court, you know, as opposed to one. And, like, sort of how it ma- – the the brilliance of Haikyuu is, like, sort of how it – what it does with its characters and how it gives, like, each character a personality that's sort of based on that volleyball position. And and it, ju- it just it, – it like, like, for me, like, it makes a story out of the sport and, like – that's almost like putting the sport into my language, you know, because like yeah. I love story. I get story. So, yeah, that's my anime of the week. Yeah. If you guys want to discuss animes with Ben, just hit him up on his Instagram at what? At Benji Fowl. Benji Fowl. And uh, my music choice of the week is I like this new song that just came out by Youngblood called Cotton Candy. Very good song. Very my type. I don't listen to... The thing with me and music is that I'm not particularly a one band guy. I don't really follow one specific band. I like music in general. And if the song sounds good and the melodies and the harmonies all really just mesh well together, that's my kind of jam. So I'm very eclectic when it comes to my music choices. So it's always going to be something different. I'm more of like a classic rock guy, but I like to listen to like EDM and a little bit of like rap and hip hop and stuff like that. But this week's song for the week is definitely Youngblood, Cotton Candy. Great song. Uh, If you have any suggestions on what songs I might want to listen to or something, hit me up at Elliot Trem on my Instagram. I don't use Twitter. so I I want to hear a little bit more about Cotton Candy. You want to hear more about it? Yeah. What do you think it means? I mean, the chorus of the song is that he wants to get something. He wants to get, uh, it goes, I want to get stuck between your teeth like cotton candy. (laughs) Something like that. It's a great chorus. (laughs) It's a good song. It really is. It's very like. Does it have like carnival sounds and stuff like that? No, it's like, it's not even, it's like a little guitar. It's not even all that. It's pretty basic um chord but it's like yeah. it's still sometimes the most basic stuff comes out so perfect yeah 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 i i, I get what you mean like it's very, like it, it's sort of like it, it doesn't have like there's not too much going on in the song a little bit yeah like under pressure yeah. under pressure of the song by queen it's like no there's a lot going on no in that song. Oh, no 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 oh yeah no, i know no, but then no, but, no, but then no, no. But then you go, no, no, no. why don't we give ourselves one more chance? No, but the, but the chord yeah, is yeah, always, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 I think also pumped up kicks, done. Dun, yeah, they say dun, pumped dun, up kicks dun, is dun, smoke dun, on the dun, water. Dun. Boom. Wait. Smoke on the, the water. water. 
Everyone learned that song through like Guitar Hero. Now, if you know how to play the guitar solo for Freebird, that's impressive. Okay? Especially, I love when it comes to Freebird. I'm just going to go off on my tangent. When it comes to Freebird, I listen to the live in Atlanta, Georgia at the Fox Theater or something. I might be wrong on that. But that thing's like a 15-minute long song. And damn, that thing goes off. Yeah, yeah. That thing, you, you're like, I listen to that on the train. People are thinking I'm having like... No, it's like a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, yeah the I'm, song. I, I, know, I, I know those like 7, 8-minute, 15-minute songs. I like, you know, like it's a journey. I mean, when it comes to 15-minute songs, I think the... Free birds up there. I mean, shine on you, crazy diamond. I don't know how long that is. I think it's in the 13 minutes. But it's like, those are like the journeys you go in. It goes slow. It gets loud. It gets slow. And that's why I like grunge a little bit because it kind of does that, but in a like a three minute way. Yeah. Like, how's it going to be by Third Eye Blind? It, it really goes into low. And then by the end of it, you hear this guy screaming in your ear if you just realized. And then all of a sudden, it gets calm again. And I'm like, wow, that's so well made. Yeah. But like I said, if you have, if you want to just talk to me about music or hit me up with a song suggestion I might like, hit me up at Elliot Trem on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm shirtless right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about lawyer. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, like we're civilized guys. In like yeah. Office. I mean, Elliot's very guys. well dressed right now. He just came back from work. He's well dressed. Everything. And, you and know, I'm also happy because I got the shout out from Doug Ellen. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm just like in shorts that are basically boxers and shirtless, you know? This guy. This is what I got to deal with. Yeah. I might become a nudist in the future. Oh my God. But this guy. that's been the first episode. That's definitely been enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Dude, I think today was like great.